Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, we will talk today about tangent function. The one. Um, well, as usually, let's start with definition, which we have um, talked about once. Let me just remind before going into the properties of the function. Um, let's define it again. Um, now, the classical definition of function tangent of the angle is sine of this angle divided by cosine of this thing. Now, alternatively, you can always resort to unit circle and basically, well, based on this uh, definition of cos, you can say that if this is an angle phi and it goes from the horizontal uh, direction of the OX towards um, our point counterclockwise, that's the positive direction of the angle, by, 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 by angle phi, and this uh, point has coordinates x, y, point belongs to the unit circle, then tangent of phi is equal to y over x. y over x. I don't want to use terminology like opposite catheters ratio uh, of the opposite catheters towards the adjacent just because we are not talking only about acute angle uh, phi, it can be something like this. This can be phi. So the point A is here. And the definition still holds, basically. It's the uh, ordinate to abscissa, the y coordinate divided by an x coordinate. So whatever the definition is, more classical if you wish, or the one which we are, uh, which we can use, which contains the unit circle, um, the properties are exactly the same, obviously. Now, the first and most important um, property of the function looking at this particular definition comes from the fact that there is something in the denominator. Now, always, if there is something in the denominator, you have to be very worried about something, which is what? Obviously, when the denominator is equal to zero. So, when this denominator equals to zero, function is undefined. Okay. Not only the function is undefined, but also every point where cosine is um, equal to zero, the function must actually have uh, an asymptote because on the top you have something which is um, uh, which has a restricted value. It's no less than minus one and no greater than one. So it's a uh, um, bounded values. But on the bottom, you have in the denominator something which goes to zero, which means the whole ratio should go to infinity. Negative infinity or positive infinity, it's a different uh, story, but nevertheless, it goes to infinity, which means in all those points where cosine is equal to zero, you will have asymptotes. Now, um, now let's basically... Um, analyze the behavior of the function uh, tangent as defined in this particular way. And we will base this on the functions sine and cosine, which we have already um, used before. So let's do it graphically. I mean, we can, use, we can do it in many different ways, but I'm just suggesting to use it graphically. So let's go from 0 to 2 pi. 
because this is basically um, a period. If we will analyze the function on this particular interval, it means it will repeat it everywhere else. So this is pi. This is 3 pi over 2. This is pi over 2. So first, let's um, look at the sign on the top. So y is equal to tangent of x, which is equal to sine of x over cosine of x. By definition, there's nothing to talk about this. So first, let's draw the sign. Sign would be uh, something like this. Now let's draw a cosine. Cosine on the same 0 to 2 pi would look like this. Okay. Now, let's draw the tangent, which is basically a ratio of this over this. Well, zero, now, that's where um, our cosine is equal to 1, and sine is equal to 0, so the ratio will be 0. So we will have this point. Now, moving to the right, my numerator is increasing, my denominator is decreasing, which means my uh, ratio should increase. This is increasing, this is decreasing, so my ratio is increasing. Now, at the point where they are equal to each other, which is this one, which happened to be p over 4, by the way, which is 45 degrees, uh, the ratio will be equal to 1. And then, so let me put this little O, and then as I approach p over 2, my sine is increasing to 1, but my cosine decreasing down to 0, which means what? That the function tangent, which is a ratio, should really go to infinity, and positive infinity, by the way, because both uh, numerator and denominator are equal to, uh, are, are positive. So, as I approach p over 2 from the left, um, my ratio should go to, to, to plus infinity. So, this is asymptote and my graph would look like this, I would say. It increases to plus infinity. Now, as soon as we jump over uh, pi over 2, my numerator is still positive, my denominator is negative, but also very, very small, which means it's also, when I, impro when I approach uh, p over 2 from the right, uh, I'm also supposed to increase in the absolute value, but the sign would be negative, which means on this side of um, the asymptote, I will have a negative infinity. Still infinity, because this is still almost zero, and this is uh, a bounded area, about one, but negative. So, it goes like this. Now, at this particular point, right in the middle, when they are equal in absolute value but opposite in signs, I will have minus 1. And then as I approach pi, my sine on the top would be equal to 0, but my cosine would be negative, minus 1, so the ratio would be something like this. After that, 
we are crossing to the positive side because both numerator and denominator are negative, so negative divided by negative would be uh, positive. Now, so at this particular in between, right in the middle, it will reach 1 again. But whenever I reach 3 pi over 2, I will also have the same story. My denominator goes to 0, my numerator is about minus 1. So the ratio would be uh, infinite in absolute value and positive in sign because both of them are negative. So it goes something like this. What happens after it? Again, similarly to this. They are of different sign right now, so the ratio would still be uh, infinite in absolute value, but negative in sign. And finally, I will reach zero at this point. So this is my graph on a segment from zero to two pi. Now, what happens after this? Well, obviously, or before that. Obviously, if I have something like uh, here, minus pi over two, I will also have an asymptote, and the graph would continue this way. And so here, another asymptote, and the graph would continue this way. So basically, the graph is also, as you see, um, repetitive. Uh, it has a period. And this is a pattern which repeats itself. So from 0 to pi over 2, it grows to plus infinity. From pi, to, pi, pi over 2 to pi, it, it, it goes from minus infinity to 0, then continues to plus infinity. And then when we cross over 3 pi over 2, again from minus infinity to 0 at 2 pi, etc. Now, what's interesting is that although periodicity of the sign, uh, of the sign, the red one, is 2 pi, and periodicity of the cosine, the purple one, is also 2 pi, but the periodicity of their ratio, look, it's pi. It repeats itself, right? From minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, this particular segment, which has the lengths of pi, not 2 pi, 1 pi, pi, it repeats itself. So, well, that's the property. So the period of the tangent is pi, not 2 pi. I mean, obviously, 2 pi is also a period, because if the function repeats its value after pi, it repeats its value after 2 pi as well. But our purpose is to mention the smallest period, obviously. Uh, so the smallest period in this case is a pi. Now, um, can we algebraically define, uh, derive this property that the tangent is um, a function of a period uh, pi? Well, yes, we can. And here is how. Let's just remember the following. If you will take sine of x plus pi. So if you add pi, which is a straight angle, you will, um, and, and, the, and the sine is um, an ordinate, your ordinate will change, will change the sine, but will be the same in absolute value. From here, you add pi, which means you go here. So if that was your point in the beginning, then it goes to a prime. So whatever ordinate was positive here would be negative here. So sine of x, uh, uh, sine of x plus pi equals to minus sine of x. Now, how about cosine? Cosine of x plus pi. The same picture. Cosine is an x-coordinate of the point, abscissa. So if it was positive uh, for an x, it would be negative for x plus pi. So it's also minus. 
So if you will divide one over another, you will see that tangent of x plus pi, in all those points, x where tangent exists, of course, equals to tangent x, which proves that the pi is a period. Now, so we basically have proven this particular property. And uh, there is another property which I use usually mention as well, and we can derive it here as well. Um, tangent pi minus x. Um, one more thing I forgot to mention before doing this. Tangent is an odd function. Why? Because sine is odd function. It changes the sign of the function if you change the sign of the argument, right? So sine of minus x equals minus sine of x. Now cosine is an even function, which means it's the same for minus I x and x. If you want to check it again, draw a picture of the unit circle, which means that if you divide one over another, wherever it's possible, of course, you will see that the tangent of minus x is equal to minus tangent of x, which means tangent is an odd function. It changes the value of function if the, uh, the sign of the function if the sign of the argument is changing. Now, to derive the property I'm talking about right now, let's do it this way. I change the sign of the argument, which means I have to change the sign of the function. Now, pi is a period. So whether we add pi or we subtract pi, it will be the same as tangent x. So this is another formula. Tangent of pi minus x is equal to minus tangent of x. Tangent of pi plus x or x plus pi is the same as tangent without changing the sign. Because pi is a period. What else remains to be? Uh, so asymptotes are at pi over 2. Asymptotes pi over 2 plus pi n, where n is any natural number, positive or, or, or any integer number. It, it can be negative as well if you go to the, So pi over 2. That's where your uh, asymptote is. And then 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, or minus pi over 2, or minus 3 pi over 2, etc. And zeros zeros are at 0 and pi, etc. So at pi times n where n is any integer number. So these are the properties. This is the function. This is the graph. Uh, what else? Regular manipulations with graph, if you are like stretching, squeezing, shifting, whatever, remains exactly the same. I don't want to go into this. Basically, that's it about tangent. Um, again, let's just remember that unit circle in classical sense, uh, is used to define sine and cosine, and tangent is usually defined as a ratio. Uh, obviously, we can define it as a um, ratio not of a sine over cosine, but a, a ratio of um, a, a ordinate uh, to abscissa of, of the point on the unit circle. But traditionally, this is kind of more appropriate, I guess. Well, that's it. Thank you very much, and uh, good luck.